Hello everyone! Welcome back to the BCU Boutiques channel. Thanks for joining us today. But you might be saying, but wait a minute, that's not BCU. No, I am not. My name is Diane. Many of you may know me already, but for those of you who don't, I work here at BCU Boutiques with Brenda, her son Jordan, his wife Lauren, who happens to be my daughter, and our dear friend Javi. We have a lot of fun here. And today BCU has asked me to come on and share a project that I did about one to two weeks ago, which is this multi-strand torsad necklace that you see me wearing. So we're going to have a lot of fun working on a multi-strand necklace. We're going to talk about how you can gauge how long you need your strands to be, how to hook them in the back, all that fun stuff. Now, if this is the type of video that you like, you enjoy, please hit that like button, comment down below and let us know what you think, and subscribe if you'd like to see some more fun jewelry tutorials. And don't forget to click on that bell icon for notifications about upcoming videos. So why don't you come on over and we'll get started. Okay guys, so here we are and here's our necklace. So let me pull it apart this way and you'll see. I'll untwist it a little bit. This is six strands, a multi-strand piece. And I'm going to see if Javi can zoom in a little bit. There we go. So we have one, two three, four, five, six strands. Um, and so I'm going to show you how I did this using some other colors, but we'll get to that in a minute. So I'm, first of all, I'm going to show you the items that you will need to complete a necklace like this. Okay. There is the clasp and closure. So what you're going to need, because that's the most important part, right? What do I need to make this? What you're going to need is an assortment, let's push this out of the way for a minute, of eight millimeter beads. For the one that I'm going to be making today, I chose purple spectra beads, lavender, purple orchid, whatever you want to call them, and some white pearls in eight millimeter size. I also chose some eight millimeter molded beads. These two are glass, by the way, glass beads, but I, I'm not afraid to mix and match. I'm also going to be using some eight millimeter molded roses beads. Could we zoom, zoom in a little bit on those? There you can see those are like, they look like little molded roses, um, but they kind of match that lavender color. So I liked that combination. So any assortment of eight millimeter beads that you like. I also chose some six millimeter beads and I have a thing for purple and green. So I have some six millimeter pave rhinestone beads and then also some six millimeter green cat's eye beads that we'll be using. So two different sizes of beads. Oops, one more. Let me pull these out of the bag to show you. These ones are five millimeter AB crystal beads. They give a little bit of bling because everybody who knows me knows I'm all about the bling. So we're going to use those. And then I got some little bell flowers. And these were the kind of the inspiration for the color scheme. These ones, if, if you can see right there, they're little bell flowers. And they are that green color, the white, and the orchid purple. So once I saw these, this was my starting point and it gave me my color scheme for the necklace. But you can choose any color scheme you like. It doesn't have to be this one. For this one, I used several different shades of blue and some iridescent beads. I also used some rhinestone rondelles because again, I like the bling. So we're also going to be using those in this piece. I have some little rhinestone rondelles and some bigger ones. And then lastly, just for a little bit of different texture on the piece, I also chose to use some purple bicone beads. So I'm going to show you what I came up with so far. We'll push these things out of the way. Oops, we're going to, I need to show you a couple other things. You're also going to need a couple of jump rings. So let me pull mine out. 
We'll need a few jump rings. We're gonna need a few straight pins, head pins. We're going to need some crimp beads. I have some little, little two millimeter silver crimp beads. And then we're going to need some big bead caps for the end of the necklace. Now on the blue one, I'll show you. I used these beehive style bead caps. Let's see if I can get a good shot. There we go, the beehive style. And I'll show you those. These are a great choice because, I'm gonna tell you why, because they have a wide opening at the end. And when you gather all your strands together, you want them to be able to fit into that wide opening of the bead cap. So you could use those. But today I chose, since I'm doing like a springtime kind of theme and a flowery theme, to use tulip bead caps for that flower look. And they also have that large opening. So we'll be using those. I think that's everything. And then of course, oh, and a lobster claw. I chose because, yet again, here comes the bling, a rhinestone studded lobster claw. Okay, so let me show you what I've got done so far. I finished three strands last night in my purple and green color scheme. So if you wanna just zoom in just a little bit, Javi, please. There we go. So on this one, I took my eight millimeter purple spectra beads and I strung them out. See, you can tell I don't do this often. I forgot one thing to show you. You need wire to string that, don't you? That would be helpful, right? <laughs> a little bit of wire. So this is the one that I used. It's Beetalon seven strand. See if I can get that up there so you can see that Beetalon seven strand in the color Brilliant. It has good flexibility. It's a medium weight bead stringing wire and for this size beads, it works really great. So you can find this pretty much anywhere. It's not hard to find at all. So that's what I use to string them on. So I started with my purple spectras and I strung them three. And then for every three, I, I put a rhinestone just to add a little bit of interest. On my second strand, I took my little AB beads, whoops, I'm out of the camera frame there. Took my little AB beads, added a pave bead and some little rondelles for every five. And then this one, I used those spectra beads again, some white pearls and some of those iridescent, just so everything kind of works together. So you're pulling a little bit. So I have purple spectras here, I have purple spectras here. I have AB beads here, but I also have them here. So it connects the look of what you're doing these three are all finished. As you'll see, I'll show you on the end. They have a little loop, and this is what I'm gonna teach you how to do. They have a little loop at the end, on each end. Here's the other end. There you can see the two loops. And every one of them will be finished like that. Now for the necklace that I am making, I measured these strands to be 20 inches long. Now you can decide what length you would like your necklace to be. The blue one that I made, this one over here, oh, that's a good shot of the beads. This one over here is a little bit longer. I wanted it to be a little bit longer because I made it to wear with the outfit that I have on today, and I knew it needed to be a little bit longer, but you can decide how long you want it to be. I chose 20 inches for this one. So when you, get, when you start, you're gonna take your bead stringing wire and you're gonna cut yourself a length of wire, depending on how long you want your strand to be. Now for this one, because I wanted it to be 20, I cut mine about 24 inches long. And you're saying, why would you do that? That's four extra inches. Yes, I know. But you'll see why we need those extra inches when we go to make our little loops at the end. Okay, so you wanna give yourself a little bit of room so what I do to get started, we'll move these three out of the way. We're gonna finish the last two together on camera. So here's my fourth strand. Again, I used the purple spectras, and then I used those little bellflower beads and some rondelles. 
and strung them on the wire. Now what I do to start out with is I cut my length of wire and I put a little knot. I tie a loose knot in the end. Can you see that? So when I start stringing the beads don't go flying off the other end. So I've worked on this one and it's pretty good. I think it's a pretty good length but we're going to match it up to the other one just to make sure. So what I'll do is I'll start at one end and I'll match up that last bead that I put on. Now these three little ones here, those will come at the end, but I'm just matching up the actual beads that I'm using. So I'll match these two together and then I'm going to pull down, stretch all the way down and see where I come out. It looks like I'm a little short. It looks like I need to add a little bit more to this one. So once I get one, one finished and looped and knotted and everything and ready to go, that's how it helps me to gauge how, how close the other ones are to being done. So it looks like I need to add a little bit to this one. So I'm going to unknot the end. Okay, I'm going to watch my pattern. So at this point I need a little rondelle. So I'll string that on there and then I need another bellflower. I have a little dish of goodies that I'm working off of over here. I like to do this. I like to put all my little odds and ends on a plate so that I can reach for whatever I need. And now I need uh, one more spectra bead and then we'll measure it again and see how it lays out. Okay, so I'm going to start at this end again. Match up the two ends, not counting these three little extra beads. I'm going to pull it down and see how I finish out. And that's looking pretty good, but look what happened my ends don't match. This one ends with a bead, this one ends with the bellflower. Can you see that? I like my ends to match so I'm going to pop that little bellflower off because we're so close in length so that my ends match. So we'll pull that off and we'll measure again one more time. See where we're at. And that looks pretty good. So now the reason I have these three little beads on the end is because you want something smaller on the end because that's what's going to have to fit up inside your bead cap. And if, if you use big beads all the way to the end, you're not going to be able to fit the ends of all the strands up in that cap. Does that make sense? So we need little tiny beads. You can use even smaller size than I did. These are five millimeter. On the blue one I used four millimeter. You could use little spacer beads, whatever you think, but you need little small beads that'll let all five or six strands, however many you do, fit up into that bead cap. So I'm going to add those now to this strand. We'll do three on each end and then I'll show you how we crimp them off and make that loop. Oops, wrong bead. Okay, so now I have my three on the end of this one and make sure the other end is safe and that your beads aren't flying off. If you, you want, you can knot that end again to make sure they don't come off. All right, so here we have our three beads. Now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take a little crimp bead. So I'm going to dump a few of these out for me. Like I said, these are two millimeter size. I'm going to put on my reading glasses so I can see what I'm doing. And we're going to take this and we're going to make sure you want to make sure you look in the end of your little crimp bead because sometimes there's a little obstruction. You want to make sure there's no obstructions, that they're completely clear through. And we're going to slide it on to our strand right up to our beads. If we can get a shot of that there, you can see. Can you zoom in on that a little bit for me? Okay, so you can, whoops. You can see there's your little crimp. Okay, 
Then what we're going to do, I'm going to slide these beads a little bit more this way. All right, so this is the tricky part. So we might have to get Javi to zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to pull the crimp bead up a little bit away from those beads because I want to take the end of my wire, turn it on itself, loop it, and push it back through this crimp bead, okay? So we're going to do that. We're going to push it back through. All right, now can you see we made a loop there? And you can see the little tail end sticking out. We're going to pull on that end until we get the size loop we want. I'm going to keep pulling. Can you sit here? Let me see. There we go. I'm going to keep pulling on this tail end Oops. until I get a small enough loop. Okay, so that's about the right size loop that you want. Okay? Then I'm going to take my flat nose pliers, put them on that, whoops, put them on that crimp and push down as hard as I can and really squeeze that crimp tightly shut. Okay? So let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit. Now you can see it flattened to that crimp out and it's going to hold that securely. So what we're going to do is pull up this tail end and, and clip it off using a pair of flush cutters. So I'm just going to crimp that end off, or, or clip it off, I should say. So there goes that. And then what you're left with is your little loop. And it's nice and secure. So you're going to slide your beads down then, all the way to that loop. Slide them all the way down to the loop. Come all the way down to the other end. And we're going to do the same thing. But it's going to be a little trickier on this side. Because we want to get that really secure to the beads. So I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to take our three beads. We're going to do our three little beads. Okay, so there we are. We have our three small beads. We're going to take another crimp bead. Going to look in there and check it out. Make sure it's clear all the way through. Slide it onto our wire and get it down. Let me move this out of the way. I think it's blocking our view. There we go. Get it right close to our beads. We're going to have to pull it a little bit of ways away though because we've got to get this wire back through. So we're going to pull it up just a little bit, and that's why you need this extra bit of wire here. We're going to pull it up, and again I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this, push it back through to make a loop. Now here comes the tricky part. On this one, you want to keep as much wire as you can. You're going to pull this. Javi, why don't you reach over and pull on that tail end? Because you want to get it down past these beads. Reach your hand in here and pull on that for me. Okay, very good. All right, do you see how now it's going past my beads? I need it to do that on this side because now I've got to slide that crimp bead back down to here and I still need a tail to pull on. And I could even pull it a little bit further because that loop's going to be pretty small. All right, now I'm going to push. This is the hard part. So you're going to take this crimp bead and you want to slide it back, but you're going to have to slide it back down both of these pieces. You want to slide it all the way back to your beads so that your beads are on your wire tight. Okay, just like that. Slide it back. That's why we pulled this one so far, so we had enough to slide all the way down. Now you want to make sure your beads are, your crimp bead is all the way down and it's holding your beads tightly together. You don't want big spaces in between your beads. Now you do want to be able to move them. You want to be able to have a little movement. You don't want to do it so tight that it's so stiff that it won't move. Because remember we're making a flexible 
torsade that we're going to twist. So there needs to be a little bit of movement, but you want the, the beads snugly together. So I'm going to check that again. I'm going to make sure that this is close to my beads. And it's not. I need to move it down a little more. Okay, and once you get it where you want it, we're going to pull on this tail end again and make our loop. Now, sometimes when you get it down to your beads, it, it, it's a little bit trickier to pull because you're trying to keep it snug to the beads. So what I do is I take a pair of the flat nose pliers and sometimes that'll help me pull a little bit easier. And you might have to move it around some, play with, there it goes. There it goes. You can see it getting smaller. We need it. Okay, so there we are. We want it a little bit smaller than that. Okay, and there we are. Oops, let me turn it. There's our little loop. Now we want to flatten that crimp bead. That one's actually a little bit. We could maybe even make that a tad bit smaller. We're going to flatten that crimp bead as hard as we can. And then we're going to nip off this tail end. And there you have your looped end on both sides. Okay, we have one more to do. Now we have four completed strands. We have one more to do. I was working on this one last night. Time got away from me, so we're going to finish this one quickly and measure it up, get our ends, and then I will show you how we attach it all together at the end. So I'm going to undo my little knot there and start adding my beads. So this one I did just a combination of some of the six millimeter beads, the bicones, and those rose beads to pick up more of the green and the purple. And so I need to start adding my beads. Now as I'm doing this, you guys, um, you can make this any which way you want. You don't need this many different beads if you don't want that many different beads. You don't need this many different strands if you don't want them. You could have made three each of these two and when you twist them together, it's going to be beautiful. I just tend to like a lot of variation. In fact, you could take and make five of these and twist them together and it would look great. Even if you didn't want the rendels. Um, Brenda and I were talking and we were saying, wouldn't it be great to do a necklace that was just all white pearls, all different pearls. The, this combination right here, these colors, we were thinking, wouldn't they be beautiful for a mother of the bride? Could you see a mother of the bride wearing something like this? How pretty would that be? If you like to make bridal jewelry, this is something you might want to think about. Um, using just, say, white pearls and maybe some crystal AB beads with a little bit of bling thrown in. How pretty would that be? So really, the combination of beads is completely up to you. I just tend to like a lot of variation and a lot of bling, but that's not for everybody. But these necklaces can be great, if, especially if you did something more subdued. Let's say this was all in white pearls. Couldn't you wear that to the office for a job interview or an important meeting? If you were a guest at a wedding? So there's so many ways that these necklaces can be worn. In fact, some people like to take a necklace like this and dress themselves down, do a little bit of a casual look jean jacket, white t-shirt, jeans, and then throw on a glitzy necklace. That's a great look. Okay, so the, while I'm doing this, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna do a strand like this where there's like a lot of variation, just make sure that as you're doing it, you're watching your pattern. You don't wanna get all the way up here and realize that way back here, there was a boo-boo. <laughs> I mean, you can always unstring them and do them again. I had to do that a couple of times and I was a little irritated with myself. So kind of watch your pattern as you go. Oops. And this one I put a little bit of these pave beads in 
I thought they were pretty. Javi, you watch. Make sure I don't get out of the frame, please. Okay. Trusty Javi <laughs> over here. She's so good at all this technical stuff. Okay, and this one I used the cat's eye in as well. I liked the little bit of light reflective quality from that. I'll add a purple bicone. And then we'll check the length. See what we get. Tell me how in the comments, guys, how you like to wear stuff like this. Do you like to put on a casual outfit and then put on a really big statement necklace? Do you like to wear it to a wedding somewhere fancy? Um, do you like to wear it to the office? What's your favorite place to wear something like this? I'd love to know. I'm up for all of it. I'm always about the bling. My sister-in-law and I were shopping the other day and I was noticing all these fabulous necklaces and saying, oh my goodness, look at this one, look at this one. And and she said, I think I'm the wrong person to shop with you. She's because she her her taste in jewelry is very, very simple. But that's okay. I said that that's great. Everybody has their own style and you can work just about any jewelry um, idea into your style. You could take something like this and just do some six millimeter beads on one or two strands and, and wear them and it would look great. See, I'm talking, I'm not paying attention to my pattern after I just said, really watch what you're doing, right? Okay, so we're gonna do a couple more and then I'll see where I'm lining up. All right, so we're going to pull this one. This is the one that I keep using as my gauge. I'm going to line it up, see how I'm doing. Not too bad. I got just a little bit more to go. And then I'll show you one more time how to make those loops. And of course, you can always come back and watch again and Rewind, fast forward, whatever you need to do. That's what I do when I find a video that I like the way someone's doing something. I'll rewatch it a couple of times and go back to certain spots. I'm getting myself twisted here. Okay, let's continue. So, where am I at? I am looking for a green one. And I, I like to do this while I'm sitting and watching TV. Um, passes the time while I'm, especially if my husband's watching football. How about that? <laughs> you know, I want to be in the room with him, but I'm not really interested in football. So I'll sit there and I'll play with my beading and see what I can come up with. These purple bicones I got from a bead mix that I had. So always look at, there's always some little small beads at the end of a bead mix that are great for this kind of thing. Um, for adding a little extra interest, a little bit of color. Okay, we finish this section up and then we'll see where we're at again. Oops, that's not a good shot, guys. Sorry. I'm going to lay these out again. See how I'm looking. Oh, I might have gone too far. Yep, I went too far. That's no big deal. So I, these, these few just need to come off. Oop, and we're done. So here's this strand all completed. Adds a little bit of color to the piece. So now all we have to do is add our three little beads on each end and our crimps. And then we'll get to the business of putting it all together. All right, so let me get a, this out of the way. And we'll get in here so you can see again how we're doing this. Okay, so I'm going to take my crimp, double check that it's clear. Put my crimp on there, down to my bead. 
then I'm going to pull it, because this is the easier end, I'm going to pull it a little away from the beads, take this end and loop it back through. And these two millimeter crimps seem to work well with this seven strand beetle on. Okay, so I'm going to pull that tail, that extra tail that I got from pushing it back through until I get the size loop that I want. Oops, turn it that way. There's our little loop. We're going to crimp it down, get our flat pliers and crimp it down really hard. And then clip off that tail. One end done. Now we're going to go to the other side. Now, now that I have this and finished and I know my beads can't go flying anywhere. I like to do one last double check on length. So we'll do that again just to make sure I'm good. Looks pretty good. All right, so now we'll do our three little beads on this end. Now this, I've got a little bit too much left here so I'm gonna clip some of that off. my three little beads. Okay, there they are. Now my crimp. Slide it on there. Okay, so now this is the tricky end again because we want to make sure we want to pull down on it and make sure our beads are tight but not stiff. Pull it a little, pull that crimp a little away from our beads and loop back through. Sometimes it wants to be stubborn and doesn't want to push through. But if you just play with it, you'll get it. Okay, so there we go. We're getting it through. Now we want to pull till we make our little loop. Okay, but now see what happens. We get a little bit away from the beads. So we have to pull, reach up and pull it back down tight to the beads and then pull, pull on the loop again till we get it small enough. Okay, there we are and it's pretty tight on my beads. I'm gonna pull that tail up a little bit and clip it off. And we're done. Okay, so now we have all five strands. That one's finished. So we're going to gather up our, our five strands. I'm going to lay them out. I think you forgot to crimp it. What? Did I not crimp it? Oh, you're right, I didn't. Thank you, Javi. I got so intent on what I was doing, I forgot to, to crimp that down. That would have been a tragedy. Things would have been flying everywhere. And you want to crimp that before you clip the tail end. That was my mistake. Thank you. Okay. We're good. Okay. I like to lay them out. Um, see how I want them to kind of match up. You can put them in any order you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So we're going to pull five ends down. I have five strands for this one. You can do five. You can do six. You can do seven. You can do whatever you want. It's just what you like. Okay, so I got my all my ends there. So now how we're going to connect this is we're going to take our bead cap. Like I said, I'm using these two bead caps. And we're going to use a head pin. I would say use an eye pin. The problem with using an eye pin is the loop is not big enough. So we're going to make our own. So you take your head pin, you clip off the little flat head on the top. Make yourself just a straight piece there and you're going to come about, I want to say about a third of the way down. Does that look about, yeah, it looks about a third. Bend it over and then we're going to take our 
round nose pliers and roll it back and make a really, and I'm going to roll it. Can you see how far back I am in there? I'm going to roll it at the end because I want it to be a really big loop. All right, do you see? Can you see how big that, whoops, that loop is? So that's a lot bigger than a, a regular eye pin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it like this and I'm going to start loading my strands on with my little loops. I'm just going to pop them on there one at a time. Now let's see if we can get a, can you zoom in on that? Okay, so there, you can see they're all loaded in, all my little loops on this homemade eye pin. And then I'm going to close that up. I'm going to roll it to close it up and make it straight. Okay, so now they're all hooked in on there and attached there. And then we're going to take our cap and run this pin up through. And that's why we needed those little beads. See how those little beads just fit right up in there? And now we're almost done with one end of the necklace. So at this point, I want to finish this off to look really pretty on the ends. So I am going to take a rhinestone rondelle. And you can do whatever you like, however you want to finish it off. I'm going to take a rhinestone rondelle there and one of my purple bicones and finish it off like that. Now I'm going to clip off the end of my head pin to a much shorter length. Bend it over and roll it back to make a loop. There we are, all finished on that end, ready to add my lobster claw clasp. So I will take my jump ring. This I believe is a six millimeter jump ring. Take my pliers. I know Bisu uses the jumpy tool and someday I'm gonna get really good at that, but that day is not here. So I'm gonna slide my jump ring on get my lobster claw clasp out and attach it. And there we have a finished end. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to take all of our finished ends and add them to, we need to make another eye pin. I'm going to snip off my flat head on the head pin. Go down again, about a third, bend it over. Roll it back as big as I can make it. Oops. Looks like a little shepherd's hook, kind of. <laughs> and then we're going to attach all of our strands. Take our little loops that we made and just string them on there. Whoops. There we go. Close the eye pin up, get straight, and stick it through our bead cap. Add our embellishment.
Make sure you grab this in your hand and hold this stuff down back towards the bead cap when you're working with your end here. Oops, I lost one. It's okay. Somehow one fell off. Or I just forgot it. Get it back on there. No jumpers. There we go. Okay, so there's our embellishment. We're going to grab that again and hold our beads back. Clip off any unnecessary end to make our loop. And there we are. Now, on this end, you'll add a jump ring or two to connect. I like to do four or five. That way, if I want to play around with it, the neckline of my outfit needs to be, the necklace needs to be a little longer or shorter. So we'll add a couple of jump rings, and then I'll show you the finished piece. I'm just going to put two because I know I want this one to be shorter. And it looks like I need a bigger jump ring for this clasp. So let's see if Bisu has one laying around here. Whoops. Here's a big one. Okay, we've got a gold one. You understand. I left my bag of jump rings at home, so we're just going to use this gold one for purposes of getting this complete. There we go. Okay, so here, if, can we zoom out a little bit? Yep. All right, so let's push this stuff out of the way. So there is the completed necklace. Now you can wear it a little bit looser like this just falling loosely like this. But if you want to wear it as a torsade, because that's what these are, these are called. Now, you may say, why do they call it a torsade? Isn't it just a multi-strand necklace? Well, it is, but a torsade, the word torsade means a decorative, twisted, ornamental, ribbon, cord, beads, strand. So once you roll it, we'll kind of come up and maybe you can zoom in, that'll be better. You'll see how it all, you see, look all the different elements that we put into it. All right, you want to zoom back out? And you can wear it twisted like that. So it's up to you either way. Um, I'm going to show you something with the blue one that's a little nifty. Um, all right, so my blue one... I like to leave it loose. I typically do wear it twisted, but you never know when you might change your mind and want to wear it a little bit just hanging like this. But if you want it to stay twisted as you're wearing it, you can take the end, run it through two of the strands over here, then take your the, this end, but run it through two different strands, not the same two. Pull it out and if you keep doing that back and forth it's going to create you can see it's already starting to twist it's going to create a natural twist that'll stay so that's another option you have if you just want the twist to stay but so there you have it a couple of twisted torsod necklaces one blue one purple this one five strand this one six i hope you really enjoyed this project let me know if you think you might try one yourself, what your color scheme might be. Bisu's thinking about doing one in all pearls with gold. I think that would be outstanding. This one looked very wintry and icy to me, so I was in a springy mood with this one. <laughs>
We do have these purple spectra beads on the site. I just put them up today. And Javi will list all the items, the item numbers of the, the specific pieces I used underneath the video in case you want to use some of those as well. Um, and I think that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll be seeing you in another one very soon. Thanks so much for joining today, guys. Keep up with our Facebook group. If you haven't joined our Facebook group book, it's B. Sue's Creative Group on Facebook. Please come over and request to join. I think you'll really enjoy all the fun things that we do there. And again, please, if you like these kind of videos, you want to see more projects, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when another video becomes available. Thanks again and have a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you.